In 2022, Nick Kyrgios won the most service games on tour. That's even more than John Isner. He won about 56% of his second serves and about 79% of his first serves. And here's the crazy thing about Kyrgios. He isn't 6'10 like Isner, Opelka, or Karlovich. I mean, don't get me wrong, being 6'4 definitely helps. <laughs> but Kashinov, Medvedev, and Zarev, among many other players, have this same height advantage, but don't quite get the same results on their serve. So what exactly is the science behind what makes Kyrgios serve so feared, even against the best returners in the world? First, Nick's able to serve upwards of 140 miles per hour at will, averaging about 125 in last year's US Open. Now for context, here's how fast others were serving on average. Nick then combines this power with crazy spin, accuracy, and consistency. Despite hitting so hard, he's also one of the most consistent servers on tour getting about 68% of all of his first serves in, all whilst consistently targeting the outer edges of the service box. Kyrgios will literally ask his fans where to hit his next serve. He might miss his flat first serve down the tee, and instead of going for a kick serve on the second, he'll just blast a 143 mile per hour second serve. And of course, he'll even throw in a few underhand serves in every match. I mean, this guy, his opponents can't tell what he's gonna do next. I mean, not even the Joker. So that probably makes him like, the ultimate joker's joker. <laughs> <laughs> so let's break down the technique of one of the smoothest and most efficient serves in today's tennis. Kirio starts with his body leaned forward over his front foot in a fairly comfortable base. He starts with his arms swinging forward and backward like a pendulum. I mean, he's essentially built up unpredictability in every single part of his serve. Sometimes he'll do three pendulum swings, other times he'll do one, and of course, he'll even throw in the underhand serve. Now this broken rhythm is just the ultimate testament to the unpredictability in his serve. So lesson number one, unpredictability isn't just a technique, it's a way of life. <laughs> From here, he'll lift his front toe up. This ensures that he's shifting his weight onto his back leg. He'll relax both of his arms so that they drop closer to his body. Now this style of shifting your weight onto your back leg and starting with the pendulum type backswing is actually pretty common in players like Federer, Becker, and Berrettini. And this can really help with your relaxation and rhythm. And this takes us to the first key differentiator that makes his serve so effective. Kyrgios has one of the most consistent and unreadable tosses on tour. And it comes from a combination of relaxation and simplicity. After dropping his toss hand in toward the inside of his front leg, he takes the ball about 45 degrees out into the court. The wrist and elbow stay straight and the shoulder is the only thing moving. From here, he releases the ball at about eye level. Along with consistency, Kyrgios also has a very unique toss placement that you won't see in many other players. His toss allows him to make contact higher and further into the court than most other pros. Let me explain. Kyrgios tosses the ball deep into the court, about an estimated 30 inches. So more than a whole racket's distance in front of the baseline. And this of course allows him to make contact further into the court. His toss is lower than most other pros, but he's not making contact in a lower position. In fact, with a 6'4 frame and a strong leg drive, he's making contact at a higher position than most other players. And finally, he's got that slight leftward arc so that by the time he makes contact, it's aligned with his hitting shoulder. And after he releases the ball, he actually doesn't extend his release arm up as much as other players do. Now this is for two reasons. First, his motion is really fast, so he doesn't have as much time to extend his toss arm up as much as somebody like Nadal. And second, having the arm here helps to bring his center of gravity more forward, and it helps him lean his body forward into the court at contact. All right, next, on to the backswing. Kyrgios uses a staggered backswing style where his hitting arm lags by staying down until the toss finishes. Now we talk more about this in our backswing video here, so go check that out after watching this one. Now the biggest benefit of this staggered backswing is that the lagged racket forces you to go through the backswing faster for a deeper racket drop. Now one caveat here, however, is that it is a bit easier to screw the staggered backswing motion up. Namely, because you might be missing out on reaching the key checkpoints of the pre-throw position. Now, if you have no clue what that is or what I'm talking about, check out this video right here. Now, there are three keys that allow Kyrgios to make the most out of this backswing type. First, he's got a smooth transition from his backswing to his racket drop that allows him to accelerate very smoothly as well. Second, he's able to time the completion of his backswing to the end of his load. And subsequently, he can coordinate his racket drop with the launch. 
And finally, Kyrgios makes sure to reach the key positions he needs to at the end of his backswing. So in one motion, the arm is drawn back into the pre-throw position. The arm rises back and away, the elbow bends, and the racket starts rotating up through external shoulder rotation. Now for those of you trying to replicate Kyrgios' motion, making sure to reach here is key. Now this is actually one of three main backswing variations. So if you don't quite know if the staggered backswing is good for you, then I have a free quiz that you can take to find out which is the best backswing style for you. So I'll leave that in the first link in the description or right here if you're interested. Go check it out. Okay, so Kyrgios executes his backswing and simultaneously he'll begin his full body load. Now all top servers generate tons of force by loading their hip and trunk both away from the net and then back into the net. Some players like Sampras do this by turning their entire body away. But in Nick's case, when he steps up into the pinpoint stance, his rear toe actually lands just past his front heel and closer to the court. Now he doesn't rotate away as much as other players do, but he rotates his trunk back as he steps his back foot up. And this creates the second key differentiator in his serve. He gets this huge separation angle between his hips and shoulders, creating tons of torque force or stored energy in his oblique muscles. And this becomes a huge power source for Nick's serve. Now this type of loading where your trunk is rotated a lot more than your hips does require a good amount of mobility in your trunk and your lower back, and it can potentially lead to problems like over-rotating at contact. So because of that, I typically recommend keeping your feet closer to parallel. And then from there, of course, you can experiment with how much of this hip and trunk separation angle is best for you. Now, while this is happening, Kyrgios starts to bend at his knees and slightly at the hips. Bending at the hips can make the serve a little bit more complicated and harder to coordinate, but it certainly does help in getting a stronger leg drive. Nick's pinpoint stance also helps him with his forward weight shift, and it helps him to be able to use both legs more effectively than other players with wider stances. From the side view, you'll see that once he starts his serve motion, his hips never actually stop moving forward. And because his feet are closer together, he's able to use both legs to drive up hard and into the court. And finally, Kyrgios tosses in a low position and tries to hit the ball at the apex. This creates a super fast loading and unloading rhythm, allowing him to utilize more of the stretch shortening cycle with his legs and hips. And ultimately, this strong leg drive helps to get a deep racket drop position and helps in achieving the third key differentiator in his serve, the contact point. Fast forward through the racket drop and the upward swing, you'll see Kyrgios making contact high and far into the court. Nick's contact position is about 30 inches into the court and about nine and a half to 10 feet high. Now again, we can't forget that being 6'4 certainly helps. And if you have a lower contact point, chances are the same amount of depth is going to cause the ball to go into the net. But we all want to toss relatively deeper into the court so long as we're still able to lean our body weight forward and especially get our upper body going into the shot at contact. So because of his tossing position, his forward weight shift, and his strong leg drive, Kyrgios launches higher and gets his trunk leaning forward more at contact. And this higher and deeper contact position allows him to hit with higher velocity more often and more consistently, whether it's on the first serve or the second. Now, interestingly, shorter players like Fognini or Nishioka actually make contact a bit more vertical. Now, do you guys think that this is because they need to reach up more and they can't afford to sacrifice the net clearance? Or would they benefit from leaning over into the court more? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Finally, Kyrgios makes contact roughly over his hitting shoulder which gives him a good mixture of topspin and sidespin. It allows him to switch between flat and slice serves with ease without changing his tossing position. And even on his second serve, he does toss fairly deep into the court. And this helps him with one of his strongest aspects of his serve, the disguise. And all of this results in one of the most deadliest and effective serves in tennis. <laughs> So guys, that was the end of this video. Let us know which player you want us to analyze next. And in the meantime, go check out this video to learn how to get more effortless power in your serve. Until next time, athletes, go out and train hard. I'll see you in the next video.